Okay, so we're going to get started. We're going to talk about five or six different types of roofs. Um, ultimately, we can install solar uh, PV on pretty much every any roof type. Um, it really just does depend on what type of roof we're dealing with to kind of what level of customization may or may, may, or may not be required. So today we're just going to talk through five or six of them. And uh, more than likely, if you have a house here in Florida, you'll have one of these roof types. Uh, the most common uh, type of roof and probably the most straightforward, simplest type of installation is going to be your shingle roof. Um, here's a project in Port St. Lucie, Florida. This is about a 9.7 kilowatt system. Um, as you can see, uh, the conduit, you can hardly even really see that it exists. There's one little piece from here to here and the one piece of conduit that heads over the side into where the uh, meter box is. But other than that, this is a very clean, very straightforward solar project. Um, and what we do is there's these rails that are kind of running underneath the panels. So running from, from here to here. And this is why we say that there's an exoskeleton that's created. Because if you think about it, there's a, a line of rails coming this way and then lines of rails going this way. And it actually does serve to strengthen the roof. Um, and so as we get into the trusses, uh, this is what the actual penetration into the roof will look like. So you've got a gasket here, and then you've got flashing, and then we're getting down into the trusses, and that's what holds this uh, footer up. And then the footer is what attaches to the rail, which ultimately holds the panel in place. Uh, here's another shingle roof. This one is over in Sewell's Point, Florida. Again, crisp and clean. There's actually no conduit at all, because here we ran the conduit through the attic. Uh, and so you won't even see anything, and it ultimately comes out the other side over by the meter box. The next type of roof is a standing seam metal. Um, so there are two types of metal. We're going to talk about both of them, the standing seam versus the 5V. This is the standing seam where there's actually that raised rib in the roof, and we can actually clamp directly onto that rib uh, using this type of hardware. This is what's known as an S5 clip. And so basically what we're able to do is clip directly onto that standing seam, that rib. Um, ultimately, this will attach to the rail, and then the rail uh, will attach to, uh, to the panels. So it actually does strengthen the roof and keeps everything in place. And again, there's no penetrations in the roof. This is a nice, uh, nice straightforward project. Uh, here's another standing seam project that we finished uh, not long ago. This is over in Palm City, Florida. A couple of pieces of conduit here and here, but for the most part, a lot of the conduit was hidden. Um, this is really the only chance of, you might see a little bit of this from the street, but everything else, the conduit is hidden. Uh, from here, we actually ran through the ridge caps and connected these together. Um, and so this is, a, this is a nice straightforward project. It's about a 19 kW, 19 uh, thousand watt system 19 kw system in palm city florida um, and this is a brand new standing seam uh, metal roof really really nice project uh, we worked with one of our roofing installation partners on this one the next kind of roof is also a metal roof but this is what's known as a 5v and so if you look uh, the ribs are different here this isn't where the seam stands up but this is where it's kind of a w where they overlap from one metal panel one metal roof panel overlaps the next metal roof panel and then there's a row of bolts or screws that will put it to hold it down into the under laminate and into the trusses and so with this we actually will follow the uh, truss line and we will follow the bolt line and basically we'll have um, our solar system bolted in you know right alongside where the metal roof is and if you look right here these are the rails and so again, these rails run down lengthways down the, uh, the length of the system. Um, and then those are attached into the roof using uh, a different type of technology, which I'll show you. This is a close up of the, uh, the 5V mounting hardware. So as you can see, what we're doing is we're kind of crossing. Um, so there's the bolts that go down that hold the 5V in, and then we come in on both sides and form like a little X coming into the trusses uh, from both directions. So this one's going this way, this one's going this way, and then there's two more on the other side. That's what holds your footer in, and of course the footer goes up to the rail and then ultimately to the panel. Uh, the next and very common type of roof that we have in Florida is the tile roof. Um, tile is a, a little tiny bit more expensive because there is going to be some additional labor, um, but ultimately the tile roofs can come out really strong and end up looking really good. Um, so we typically will do a tile roof one of two ways. Um, either A, we'll come and we'll clear out the entire section 
of where we're going to do the solar um, we'll put in our mounts and then we'll retile around where we um, where we where we did the install um, another way is which is what we did on both of these where we'll go and we'll basically pull a small row of tiles out and then we'll go into the uh, into the trusses so with a piece of hardware similar to this we'll go into the trusses and then this will be sticking out if you can see this in my hand in the bottom right hand corner this will be sticking out and then we can ultimately tile around that um, that does require us to pull the tiles out and then make some cuts usually in the upper right hand corner upper left hand corner of the tile itself uh, to allow for that little footer to stick out uh, so here's a project that we did up in Orlando with our Sailfish Solar Branch, uh, and this came out looking really good. And again, one little piece of conduit here you can hardly even see, and then there's another piece here, and then ultimately the conduit runs up underneath the soffit of the house until it comes out of the meter here. Um, this is an attic run uh, that we did in Boynton Beach, Florida, with some old barrel tile. Um, this was... Uh, I think about a 10.5 kW system down in Boynton Beach. And um, again, we pulled out those pieces of the tile rather than taking the whole uh, section out. And then we, we put in our footers and then ultimately put the tiles back in. Uh, so we do use the company Iron Ridge for a lot of our mounting software, or excuse me, hardware. Uh, the other uh, company would be Unirack. Um, so just here's two examples. This is actually a replacement to tile that can go underneath um, the existing, uh, where, where, excuse me, where the old tile was and where the new solar panel is now covering. We can put this uh, replacement tile in there, uh, which allows for the wiring to come up and out. And then same for this. This is a more of a universal, which will go directly under the existing tile. And again, this footer will end up sticking out, and that's what we end up attaching our rails to. So here's if we were to do the tile job uh, the other way, if you will, where we're basically coming all the way down, down to the laminate, um, taking the tiles off. As you can see, here they are, and then we've got the old ones kind of stacked up here. And so here we go directly down to the laminate. We're running down the, up and down the trusses is where we've got our footers. And then once this project is done, then we'll end up putting the tile uh, underneath the, the solar panels and then ultimately kind of surrounding the area that we took out. So this is a little bit more labor intensive where we're really clearing the whole area out and then putting our rails down. Um, but there are some jobs that kind of necessitate it to do it, this, do it this way, in which case we'll bring our roofing specialists in and they'll help take those tiles off and then ultimately put them back on for us. Uh, one more option that is out there is what's called an integrated tile roof. Sometimes people just call it solar tile. Uh, this is also something that we do. This is more of a custom, uh, you know, more of a kind of a high-end installation. Definitely a lot of customization that's necessary for this. Um, but it is something we get a lot of questions about, something we're proficient in installing, um, and certainly something we can help you out with, uh, you know, here in Florida. Um, one of the things to keep in mind here is this is going to be more expensive. Um, general rule of thumb is you're probably looking at about uh, 15 to 20% more expensive to have technology like this. And then it's probably not going to be nearly as efficient as, you know, those big, or not probably, it's definitely not going to be nearly as efficient as those big panels. Um, but it is nice and aesthetically pleasing. And, and like I said, it is, they call it integrated because it does uh, integrate right into the rooftop. Unless you're really standing at an angle, you know, you won't even notice it's there. By way of example, you know, here we're looking at this, this rooftop this entire time looking at this slide, but I bet you didn't even notice there's more tiles up here. So it can really be um, integrated and kind of really aesthetically pleasing if that's something that uh, that you want to get involved with. So the, another type of roof is going to be your flat roof. Um, what we're looking at here is an installation we did out in Okeechobee, Florida. Um, this is a new construction, so we're lucky enough to be involved, you know, during the actual construction process, which if it is ever possible, that's something we certainly would advise. It gives us the ability to integrate within the actual structure of the roof, as well as integrate our wiring and our conduit into the construction of the interior. So you're not really seeing anything and it all looks as if it's built, you know, directly into the house, which it is. Um, so this, uh, for example, if you can see here, there's a little bit of conduit, but the footers themselves that are holding these rails in are into the concrete itself. And so the foundation of the roof was poured around our footers. Uh, to say the very least, those panels are not going anywhere during any storm. Everything we do is rated at 180 mile an hour plus wind zone. Um, but with systems like this, when we can integrate into the roof, you know, we're really in good shape. 
For commercial systems, uh, flat roof is going to be the most, you know, common that we get by far. Um, when typically when we're going to be brought in, if there is a new roof that's going in place, um, we definitely want those nice TPO, those flat TPO roofs, if at all possible. Um, we've built on other types of commercial roofs, of course, uh, but those nice flat roofs can really give us uh, some couple different options, including whether or not we want them at a tilt, which is what these panels are. They're picked up at a 23 degree tilt facing south towards the sun, or whether or not we would want them flush mounted onto the roof, uh, depending on what the wind zone velocity is uh, in this particular area. So again, commercial projects, um, we've done some very, very large commercial systems all the way down to your small 30, you know, 30 or 40 kilowatt uh, commercial system. So um, we can, this is probably about as, as custom as solar gets, uh, because when you're dealing with commercial, uh, now all of a sudden you're dealing with different issues such as multiple meters, such as uh, the electricity coming in and out, whether it's three phase and so on, and um, whether there's demand, uh, demand cycle billing. Um, a lot of times in Florida, whether it's Duke Energy Territory or Florida Power and Light, uh, and some and Tico and Gulf, um, you can get into a situation where you do are going to have demand billing. And so, although this is a retail facility um, on an industrial facility, sometimes you've got machines that are kicking on at five o'clock in the morning and setting that demand bar very high for the entire day. That's where solar, in particular, with battery backup, can really come into play because we're storing our energy, and then once all our machines turn on early in the morning, um, we can offset that with the solar that we, or the power that we created the day before, and ultimately keep that demand cycle at a, a more realistic rate throughout the course of the day. Another option that is very common on agricultural and anybody does have excess land is going to be your ground mounted system. Um, there's a slight increase to cost here, but really not much. It just has everything to do with this steel. Um, you know, we are going to have to build a steel uh, structure, but more times than not, or, uh, you know, over a certain period of time, I should say, the uh, cost of steel ultimately pays for itself because it gives us the ability to pick these panels up at a tilt and have them facing the sun at the exact, you know, right degree and the exact right tilt and ultimately facing south. Um, so there are some benefits to having a ground mounted system. We use these a lot on agricultural facilities and on commercial facilities that happen to have acreage next door. Uh, and so this is a good solution for certain types of commercial projects and we do them for residential as well if somebody does have some big acreage and for whatever reason they don't want to use their roof. So that this is something that's applicable for residential and commercial projects. Uh, last but not least is a parking structure type of uh, solar installation. So here it's actually going to get some extra benefits, which obviously, number one, we're providing shade for the cars throughout the day. Number two, we can actually set up uh, electric vehicle charging stations so your customers or your employees can uh, park their car underneath the shading structure and they actually charge their car directly from the sun. Um, a lot of people think that's pretty cool. Uh, and of course, this is a good use of space and so maximizing the space that you do have, which is otherwise just dedicated as a parking lot, can now turn into something which is ultimately saving you money every month. So if solar power on your residence or your business is something you want to talk about, give us a call. We've got 15 years of experience in the solar industry here in the state of Florida, and uh, we'd love to help you out with the solar project that you have in mind.